But again, by the same token, I, I don't think that a lot of these bands really have that that issue, and I think that's great. And yeah. like, we say this probably once a week. That's why we got to move to Europe. I just think that you know, metal in Europe is metal in Europe is what I would say country is here. Yeah. Because I mean, I don't know if metal's the most. It's probably not the most popular form of music all throughout Europe. I know they're in, really into techno house and stuff like that. Mm. But you know, like country here is you know. Across the country, people listen to country western music. Yeah, it's just not, the way it is. It's not very big. Or it's not. It's not anywhere near as big in other countries as it is here. Yeah. So I mean, I think that's you know, maybe what metal is in Europe, and that's why the labels kind of step back and say, like, you know, you guys can do your thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, remember we were talking last week about Showdown and how mm -hmm. how they changed. Yep. Um, within a couple albums. And we were talking about, all right, I brought up the idea to you, it was after, after we were done um, talking, but I brought up the idea that, like, what happens when the showdown opens with other hardcore bands, mm -hmm. and then plays some of their... The Temptation Comes My Way type stuff? Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine they just don't. Yeah. And you, you have to wonder, it, that's an extreme case, do you think... The first album was A Chorus of Obliteration. That was like straight up like hardcore, metalcore, mm -hmm. assault. And they go into Temptation Comes My Way, which as we said last week is like kind of a watered down Pantera, like southern metal. Mm -hmm. And then Backbreaker goes right back to that hardcore metalcore. Mm -hmm. Do you think they made that decision? Or do you think the label said, hey, we need you guys to put out something that's a little more listener friendly? Maybe they went for the cash grab. Maybe they said, well, if we put out this album, maybe we can make some money. But didn't you say that that album sold? Temptation Comes My Way well, sold yeah. sold pretty well. I mean, they, they had a slot on OzFest after that album came out. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they got themselves out there. I, I can't imagine why they would go back to doing what they were doing before. So maybe the labels, what pushed them to the Southern metal sound, and then the band said, oh, no, we don't want to do this anymore, and went back to the yeah. the hardcore. I'm sure the label, I mean, they had to have some say in that. Yeah, I was going to say, do you even think the label had say in what songs they perform? Maybe saying, like, hey, listen, you guys are in a hardcore crowd, so don't play any of, any of that one album. I, I imagine they could probably influence that. I don't yeah. think they could tell them definitively, hey, you're not allowed to play yeah. anything from that album. But I'm sure, you know, they say, like, hey, this is a this is a hardcore show. You know, you're playing with you know, these five hardcore bands. So I, I wouldn't play, right. you know, any of that stuff. Right. Um, and remember we talked about how... Uh, how we find it weird for some some touring sets to have like maybe two or three similar bands that are like the main bands touring, mm -hmm. but like they'll always throw like some new random uh, opener that has nothing to do with the genre. Yeah, and how like I think like the labels think that it's a good idea because they think like oh well everyone's going to see these bands so let's throw our new band out. And just get everybody to know who they are. But I think that it's actually worse because you're, you're putting them into a group of f fans that don't want to hear that music. They're there for, you know, the, uh, the the genre they came for. And if you're going to throw at them something completely opposite, it might not work out well, you know. And, like, yeah, yeah they're, they're going to hear the name and they're going to remember the name. But they're also going to remember, oh, that band sucks. Or, you know, they're not... They're not what I like, you know. I have a perfect example of that, and it's you know, a, a very old example, but I, I can't think of a better one. Honestly, I when I was 16, I went to see a show. It was uh, Seven Dust was the headliner. Static X was direct support. Dope was before them. Mm -hmm. And the opening band of the night was Chevelle. Now, it was before Chevelle's first album came out. Mm -hmm. They come out on stage, three brothers playing, you know, rock music along, you know, on a on a show with three bands, um, Static X was playing like industrial, hard rock, Seven Dust was, you know, about as heavy as it got at that point. Dope was almost like a Marilyn Manson clone, but more heavy. Chevelle comes out on stage. They got booed off the stage. People threw shit at them. Mm -hmm. there, this crowd wanted nothing to do with this band. Now, fast forward, I think a week later, their first album comes out, point number one. Didn't really sell very well. Two years later, the album Wonder What's Next comes out, the song The Red, which I'm sure you know because everyone in the world knew that song. Mm -hmm. Two years later, they're the biggest band in the world. 
And being on that tour certainly did not help them. Right. If anything, it set them back an album. Yeah. Because it was the wrong people to try and expose them to. Yeah. And you think the labels are just like, oops. <laughs> I, I, I don't think the labels care. I think the labels just go, well, we'll throw you out with these other bands. They're popular. Yeah, and yeah. Seven Dust was huge at that point. Yeah. So they must have thought they were going to gain something from it. And it just it, yeah. it backfired on them. Um, we don't really see that all that much now. Because I, I think in, in metal as a whole genre, you're not going to mismatch. You're not going to be too far off. I mean, you know, we've seen some interesting bills. Who did we see? Uh, um, remember when we saw Mastodon for the fifth time? And they were touring with <laughs> Between the Buried and Me and Baroness. Baroness, yeah. Yep. Baroness, and uh, I want to say there's one more, but I don't. We might have missed it. Yeah, BT Bam was all you ever need to remember about that show. But do you remember the crowd? Do you remember how, like, it was all little kids when BT Bam went on? Yeah. When Between the Buried and Me was on, they it was like... I, I think we just got there as they were going on. We caught the end of Baroness and then BT Bam. Oh, that's right. Then, yeah. yeah, then they went after, yep. And I remember that we were all the way towards the back. But the minute that they were done playing, everybody, like, left. Yep. And there was so much room, we were able to go practically to the front. And it was like the, the more serious metal fans all walked up. And yeah, and you really didn't see many people supporting both. No. I mean, there's obviously those, you know, there's always those couple who, who will support both. But basically, it really seemed like either you were a Mastodon fan, or you were a BT Bam fan. Yep. And we know which ones we were. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, that's a good point. Now, you know, I don't know if they're on the same label, I don't think so. Yeah. But you have to wonder how that show gets set up, especially and since they don't share any fans in common. The reason why I brought that up was because you reminded me about the whole booing on booing off the stage. Yep. Similar. It wasn't really booing, but it was more of a chant of, you suck dick. Yep, you suck dick. To Between the Buried and Me. Yeah, they stopped their performance to, to confront the people that started the chant. Yep. I remember the guitarist, like, got all up at the, the edge of the stage acting like he was... Gonna yeah. do something, but yeah. leaning over like, "Oh yeah, what's up? Say it no." Yeah. And they and they did, and then the singer uh, pointed out that he hadn't sucked dick <laughs> yet. Yeah, <laughs> that was a very entertaining night. <laughs> if, yep. if anyone was there, uh, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, Mastodon wasn't very good that night either. No, Brent, yeah. Brent was pretty drunk. Yeah, but, he was wasted. But either way, <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think that labels do play a part in a lot of this, and yeah. I think that they, you know, having final say, and I, I hate to go outside of the metal world to give this example, but that's why I think bands like Nine Inch Nails, they're doing something, well, not they, Trent Reznor, mm -hmm. is doing something that's going to change the music industry. I mean, he's offering stuff for free on his website, whole albums, just download it. Oh, yeah, that's right, the, the most recent one he, yep. he did, I remember you telling me about that. Yep, I mean, he's offered stuff, you know, uh, Radiohead, I guess, was the first to really do it, but Radiohead kind of screwed everyone over in the end. They offered up their album In Rainbows and said, you pay us whatever you want. You want to give us a nickel, give us a nickel. You want to give us $10, give us $10. Whatever you want to give, that's what the album costs. And so many people you know, paid a dollar, whatever, because the idea is, if you really like this band and they're offering this to you, you know, you, maybe you go, hey, I like Radiohead, I don't want to screw them over, I'll give them five bucks, you know, something like that. It's almost like tipping. Exactly. And then Nine Inch Nails took it a step further, and Trent Reznor had uh, the four-part album, Ghosts 1 through 4, that he put up on his site, and you could either, you know, buy the whole thing for, you know, five dollars for download, or you could spend fifteen dollars and get the download plus the physical copy, and, you know, he's, he's then, you know, Two months later, he gave away the album to Slip for free. He said, thanks a lot for buying all my stuff all these years. Have this one on me. Yeah. That's great. You know, that, that's the way it should be. And I think that he's showing that you don't need the major labels to, to make it work. If you are an artist and you have that, that following, mm -hmm. you can make this work without the labels. Yeah. And, you know, as much as you know, I, I love music in general and you know, the music industry, you know, things are getting pretty rough out there. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the, the downsides of the labels, because they are in it for the money, which I can't fault them for being in it for the money, but they sign these bands, and they never give these bands a chance to develop. It's like you make one album, up, oh, didn't sell, yeah. done, and yeah. you're off. I mean, how many bands have we listened to, they put out one album, and then label drops them, and they end up breaking up, because they, they just can't, you can't make a living that way. Yeah, they're not giving them a chance. And that's the whole thing with music being a commodity, is because there's so many bands that are trying to put something together, and they're just looking for that one band that can do it on their first shot. Yep. 
you know, as opposed to later on. Yeah, you really don't, don't you don't get a second chance very often. I mean, even like Mastodon, as they came out with albums, the albums got better and better. Yeah. Not saying Remission was bad. I loved Remission, but I mean, you can clearly see yeah. their progress. And just imagine. If imagine they, if they didn't. Yeah. Imagine yeah. If, if the label just cut them off there. You know, who yeah. who knows where they'd be now. I mean, that's uh, that's the big thing, and I think, um, you know, we'll tie this up next week. I think we're going to talk about downloading and how that's affected the music industry in general. Yeah, yeah. And I think that ties into this whole label thing and, you know, how labels are trying to get those few big bands to support all the little bands because they just feel like, you know, downloading is killing the industry, and I guess that's that's debatable, and I guess next week we're going we're gonna to debate that one. Yeah. I think that'll be an interesting conversation. Sounds good. Um, so we had a lot of great stuff on the site this week. You guys are really, I mean, we're we're really proud. We broke three thousand views this past week, which um, yeah. is pretty great. You know, we've really only been doing this for the course of about two months now, so we're pretty pretty happy with that. Uh, Sunday, we had up our first interview with the French death metal band Arcan. Uh, can't thank them enough for taking the time out of their schedule to uh, you know to answer some questions for us, and you know, we were really happy with the result. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got a lot more coming, uh, a lot of interviews, we're getting out there fast and furious. If you guys, uh, you know, if you want your band reviewed or if you want to do an interview with us, uh, contact our, our marketing and uh, PR person, her name is Christine, uh, email sorroweternalblog at gmail.com, shoot her an email and we can uh, set something up, she's, you know, hooking us up with all this stuff. Yeah. Um... See, knowing now that, I mean, how many views we're getting, please comment. Yeah, please. <laughs> I know he asks this every time, but, I mean, we know that you're all checking it out, and leave something. Give us a thumbs up, or... Or, or a say, thumbs down. Or even, or a hey, or what's up, but just, yeah, share share something with us, just so we know that, that you're there, that you're reading it. See a lot of blank pages. <laughs> yep. But, I mean, there's there's no possible way that you can agree with everything we're doing. Maybe you disagree on an album score. Yeah. I know we saw a couple comments around the, around the web saying that, you know, they thought we were too generous on this album or not generous enough on this one. Yeah. So, Say know. it to our face. Yeah. <laughs> Say it to our face <laughs> online in the comment box. Yeah. You know, let us know what you think. <laughs> and make sure, you know, to, to, to uh, bring up again what we're going to talk about next week, this whole downloading phenomenon. Make sure you're buying the albums, support these bands, you know. Make sure you buy the stuff you like, so that way these bands can continue to put out great music, and we can continue to review great music. Yep. I think that's the best part of it, of doing what we're doing is that we are just finding great album after great album after great album. Uh, I mean, on the site this week we had the three we already talked about: uh, Hinzendig, Natsaria, and Nimbatis. The new Amorphous album, we got a hold of that, and that's you know, that's up on the site. Yep. So, I mean. We uh, you did Death Angel this week, and that's yeah, you know that's well. a little bit uh you know outside the realm that we've gone before. So yeah. you know we got so much great music coming in, and we're glad you guys are reading it. So buy the albums, and uh, you know, next week Chester will be back. I think um, he should be getting back from Vegas. Yeah, I mean I don't know if the midget will be with him or not. We might hey maybe we have two special guests Chester and a midget, but <laughs> uh, you know we'll see. But next week we'll we'll hit the the heavy topics and. Thank you guys for listening, and we will see you next week. Next week.